Hi, and welcome to The Bridge. My name is Pastor Randy Jones. And, and I'm Nancy. And you're Nancy. And Just in we case are, you forgot. <laughs> and I did forget. Okay. We are The Bridge, and we want to share some thoughts with you from Hebrews chapter 7 in just a few minutes. Nancy's going to greet you, give a testimony, and read scripture, and we're going to get it underway. So call a friend and join us. Uh, take the next few minutes, and let's encourage ourselves, delight ourselves in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless yes. you, Nancy. So welcome, and we're glad that you are joining us in Illinois. We're back in Illinois again, and it's kind of noisy because there's a main street right about two campers away from us so <laughs> it's uh, pretty noisy and there's a playground behind us and so kids may go there but this is what it is right it's, it's life good and it's, it's a good life. yeah it's good none of those kids back there are our grandkids right now but <laughs> it's okay we'll see them later but we just wanted to welcome you and and thank you for joining with us Amen. and you can see down below there though the way that you can connect with us on our website our website is linked to all of the other platforms that you can join us on. Um, we thank you for the good results of you viewing with us and supporting us in your prayers and also in your love gifts because um, ministry is going forward. And this is not the main testimony, but we had a great weekend. Um, Randy was able to share with 40,000 plus people in in not Afghanistan in Pakistan and um, that was really a great ministry that went for mm -hmm. all from right here from our fifth world but it does go into Afghanistan yeah it does that's right it, it does go into it and, and we viewed that you can see the um, that report on his uh, Facebook and stuff it, that report is available for you to see the ministry that was going for yeah. that was to amazing. God be the glory amen, but, amen. Uh, but um, I'm going to share a testimony with you from a good friend of ours. This has been a friend of ours for years and years and years and years. Way more years, 100 years. <laughs> and um, she's Pam Shank from Hemet, and good dear friend. And she's been through some difficult times. None of it um, is, you know, I mean, well, she did have COVID, but this was quite a while ago. And now she was going through some issues with her heart. So I received a text from her that um, she, this was back on August 21st, and she said that she is going to have an angiogram on August 31st, just a couple days ago. They may have to put a stent in one of the arteries. They won't know until they get there. And she was asking for prayer for that. And so um, September 1st then, yesterday, or a couple days ago, she uh, texted me again and said, thank you for your prayers. The Lord really touched me. The angiogram went great. No blockages, and my heart is good. So well, praise, praise God for that. That's a good God report. Bless the shank thing. Amen. So, yeah, she's been through a lot, so it's mm -hmm. good that, that this has been an easier thing for her, and we're just believing God for a complete recovery. Don't really know what it was that was causing the problem, but sure. God does, and he's taking care of her, and that's the important mm -hmm. thing. Well, also, wait, wait, wait. Another little praise report. Um, our son-in-law, Israel, we gave a praise report a couple weeks ago about right. him, that God has been touching him and he was doing good. And um, he spent a couple weeks in the hospital. But you know what? God has really undertook. And we got a text from him the other day at the beginning of the week that he went in for another test. And those pseudocysts that were in his pancreas were beginning to dissolve and shrink on their own. Praise God for that, that they don't have to be more invasive and go in and do anything. So that's, that's God is doing it. Amen. Amen. So Amen. We're, we're thankful for that. So sure. we love you, Israel. We're glad you're doing good. Praise sure. God. Well, before Nancy reads the scripture, let's pray together. And let's give some praise to the Lord. Lord, thank you for undertaking thank for you, our friend Pam Shake. Yes, thank you that she's uh, doing better and her heart's good. And we pray that she would continue to do well, Lord. Give her... Uh, divine health and thank you that Israel is doing good and yes, that God. these pseudocysts are dissolving and we give you praise Hallelujah. for that Hallelujah. and we ask that you would just touch his entire body strengthen him and uh, bless his entire family Lord we love them and we bless them today and thank you Lord for my friend that is watching right now that needs a touch in their body if that's you Amen. just put your hand wherever thank your you, pain Jesus. is thank you. Uh, if it's in your head or if it's in your heart or lungs, uh, shoulder, just put your hand there. And that's a point of contact. And 
We just pray for all of our friends, Lord, and those that are watching right now. In the name of Jesus, we ask for a, a mighty touch from the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, you took stripes on Calvary for our healing, you, and we receive that for ourselves, and we raise our shield of faith right Hallelujah. now, and we Thank quench you, the fiery Thank darts you, of the enemy, and uh, we ask Amen. that uh, divine healing and restoration power, uh, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead that saves us, would heal us and strengthen us and minister to us now, Lord. Thank we believe you, in the Jesus. double cure. We ask for that, Lord. Take pain away. If you have pain, just receive that healing. Lord, pain is terrible, and it sometimes causes us to make poor choices. We come against pain in the name of Jesus. Jesus and we Jesus. pray for healing and joy yes. and peace yes. and strength. Thank you, Jesus. We rely upon you. Yes. You're our God and our healer. Yes. And for that, we praise you. In Jesus' resurrected name, we pray. Can I hear a hearty amen? Amen. Praise amen. God. Amen. Well, Nancy? Okay. I'm going to share with you from Hebrews 7. A lot of big names here and um, quite, quite a confusing passage. So um, you're going to unpack all this and explain it all, right? Well, with the Lord's help. Okay. So here goes. Hebrews chapter 7. And I'm going to start at verse 1 and read through 17. This Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God Most High. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, the name of Melchizedek means king of righteousness, then also king of Salem, which means king of peace, without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the son of God, he remains a priest forever. Just think how great he was. Even the patriarch Abraham gave him a tenth of the plunder. Now the law requires the descendants of Levi, who became priests, to collect a tenth from the people. That is, from their fellow Israelites, even though they were also descended from Abraham. This man, however, did not trace his descendants from Levi, Yet he collected a tenth from Abraham and blessed him who had the promise. Amen. And without doubt, the lesser is blessed by the greater. In one case, the tenth is collected by the people who die, but in the other case, by him who is declared to be living. One might say even that Levi who collects the tenth paid the tenth through Abraham because when Melchizedek met Abraham, Levi was still in the body of his ancestor. This part is Jesus like Melchizedek. In perfection, if perfection could have been attained through the Levitical priesthood, and indeed the law given to the people established that priesthood, why was there still a need for another priest to come? one in the order of Melchizedek, not in the order of Aaron. For when the priesthood is changed, the law must be changed also. He of whom these things are said belong to a different tribe, and no one from that tribe has ever served at the altar. For it is clear that our Lord descended from Judah, and in regard to that tribe of Moses said nothing about priest and what we have said is more even more clear if another priest like Melchizedek appears one who has become a priest not on the basis of a regulation as to his ancestry but on the basis of the power of an indestructible life for it is declared you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek amen wow amen you got to unpack that for us, dear. <laughs> well, bless the Lord you. will help us. Amen. Thank you for sharing with us, and God bless you, Nancy. And thank you for listening today. Let's consider this seventh chapter here of Hebrews, because Melchizedek was the priest who allowed for the blessing to flow to Abraham. Now, Abraham had to do his part, 
and we find that Abraham gave a tenth of the plunder of that which they had, a tenth gave that to Melchizedek, which was the priesthood. And today that would be like the church. So 10% of whatever you receive from whatever source, that then 10% goes to God. It goes, how does it go to God? Well, it goes to the church, the place where you are being fed, the storehouse, if you will, from Malachi chapter 3. So I'm excited to share with you, you don't have to do these things if you don't want to, but then you won't be blessed. Don't you want your prayers answered? Uh, don't you want God to uh, be proud of you because you're obedient to him? And that's the thing that's happening here is the king of Salem, which means king of peace. And because of sin, we have war in our world. We're seeing uh, Christians and women and children beaten in Afghanistan right now. They bring them out in the middle of the circle and they take a big whip. I saw this just this morning and they begin to strike the woman or the child and they begin to beat them. If a man does something wrong, they often will just push him off of a building. Uh, they'll gather the children around and dismember a finger or cut off a hand for stealing. It's bizarre. It's it's horrible what these uh, terrorists are doing in the name of Allah. And of course, we uh, know that Allah didn't believe in the resurrection. That's one of the major differences between Christianity and and this whole Muslim group is that uh, Allah taught against the resurrection and that it wasn't important and that Jesus was just a, a nice teacher. Well, we know that's not true. The reason that I'm placing my eternal soul, and I've had the privilege of doing uh, around a thousand funerals in the last uh, 40 years, and each of those, there's the promise of eternal life, and the promise is Jesus Christ. Our promise has a hope and that hope is Jesus and he's gone ahead of us he's paved the way that when we die we get to go to heaven so we have peace we don't have to beg Jesus Jesus has agreed to forgive us of our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness so as I come to the Lord and ask him for that he then brings his presence his power his blood and covers and cancels my sin. That's verses 1 through 3. Now consider verses 4 through 10, because here Jesus is speaking here about this man Abraham and how he gave a tenth. So 90% belongs to us, and we use that as we deem and are guided by the Holy Spirit. And the Lord sometimes even of that will ask for an offering or a missions gift. But 10% of whatever is taken. So this is for poor people, uh, low class people, uh, upper middle, middle, upper middle, and, and lower rich and rich and even upper rich. This is for everybody because it's a percentage. Sometimes people think, well, I'm too poor to pay a tithe. Well, that's why you're poor. I remember a lady who was a great prayer warrior that we knew really well, but she never had two dimes to rub together. A great person, but she didn't learn the principle or practice the principle of the tithe and give. And as we give, God then takes that seed and multiplies it. You can count how many apples are on the tree, but you can't count how many uh, apples will be produced from the seed because the seed multiplies itself. So as we look at verses four through 10, we note that Abraham tithed, and even Jesus endorses the tithe. I've had numbers of people through the years come to me and say, well, the New Testament doesn't teach the tithe, or Jesus doesn't teach the tithe. Well, yes, he does. In Matthew chapter 23 and, 20, and verse 23, he talks about the fact that you, you should give a tenth of the spice, mint, and dill, or cumin. That was what they had raised. The spice, the, the dill, that which they had 
had produced, just like we would produce an orange or an apple. If you had 100 apples, 10 of them then would go to the priesthood. Uh, here today, we sell something, and then we bring the money, if you will, to the house of the Lord. And Jesus says, you should have practiced the former as well as the latter. So as we look at this, we see that the former was neglecting that which was of the tithe, and the latter was that which was justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Now I understand that the point of the attack of the text here is justice, mercy, and faithfulness, but Jesus indirectly says you should have done the tithe as well as taking care of justice, mercy, and faithfulness. So Jesus paid his taxes, Jesus paid his tithe, Jesus gave and helped and blessed others. And so when he looked up to heaven and asked for a person to be raised from the dead, like the woman in Nain who her husband had died and now her son was dead, he had compassion on her. So he comes and he then raises from the dead. He raises Lazarus. And it shows that Jesus has the power over death. And I know that many people are dealing with death, especially with sicknesses, cancer, uh, different types of, of things that uh, come against our, our bodies. And so I just want to encourage you as you think about giving today, uh, looking at the text here, know that God has given you and blessed you to be a blessing. He hasn't given us seed so that we then take and eat the seed. No, the order of Melchizedek in Jesus is greater than the order of Melchizedek. Jesus didn't come to do away with. Can you imagine what would have happened to Israel if there was no Levitical priesthood to collect the tithe and to promote the business and the truth of Christianity, which at that point wasn't Christ, it was God. And of course, God saw that we needed a Savior and then brought Jesus. And Jesus came, was born of a woman, that's the human side. But then, of course, the man side, which is the blood side, was the Holy Spirit. And so when Jesus' blood came to Calvary, that was pure blood. And that was able to cover our sins, and it's able to heal our bodies. So as we look at this, we see that it is our place to be obedient to the teachings of the Word. Throughout Scripture... We find the people of Israel bringing their offerings to the Lord. Just as we give praise offerings, here's a praise offering. I lift my hands, or we praise, or we clap our hands, and we're praising the Lord. That's giving of our worship unto the Lord. We love Him, and we express that love to Him. We don't just come and take. We come and bless. We bless the Lord, O my soul. And notice it says, and all that is within me. So actually in the New Testament, God steps it up even a greater challenge, not just the tithe or the offering of the lamb or the oxen or the, the goat or whatever was being offered, but he also then asks us to then be led by the Holy Spirit. And I just want you to know that being led by the Holy Spirit in your giving and your gifts is really, really important. I get requests constantly and have for many years of people that are in need. But one of the things I like to ask people who are desiring something is what are they planting? We don't want to lose out on the ministry that God has given to us. We then build ministry based on the gifts that are given by the people. So the Levitical priesthood did their part in what? Providing the altar, providing all of the elements that are needed for the forgiveness. And then once that's accomplished, once a year, they could go into the Holy of Holies. Well, what's going on in the Holy of Holies? It's listening to God. Not just us laundering our petitions, we ask God to forgive us. But notice that 
there is this listening. And the order of Melchizedek, he is one that didn't have a beginning or an ending, like in a manner of Jesus. And Jesus came and he presents himself as the living sacrifice, the second Adam, if you will. And he's going to be obedient even unto death. I know of great men and women that have died that we wonder, well, God, why didn't you heal them? And they actually got their healing as they got promoted into heaven. That becomes God's plan and will. Now, not in all cases. So let's not do as some of our uh, friends have done and just give up and say, well, God doesn't heal. Oh, yeah, he does. God's will has to be done. He wants us to trust him. Jesus had to give his life and trust God with his soul. So his eternal soul, that part of him, actually at death, he then was faced with a separation from God. But God, in his divine wisdom, rose and brought Jesus back to life. It was impossible with the spear that went inside of him and all of the fluids uh, flowed out of his body, both blood and water. Uh, all of the things that they did to Jesus to cause him to die. But God supernaturally brought Jesus back to life. That's why we believe, and listen to me carefully, we believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus. That's why when we ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from some, no, all unrighteousness. So there is the obedient factor. Jesus was obedient unto death. And I guess one of the disappointing things is that so many uh, Christians are not obedient with their life. They just keep repeating the same things over and over. They don't give of their worship. They don't give of their tithe. They don't give of their abilities. Whatever God has given to them, they don't use that to build up others and encouraging others. They go to church just to take, 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 take. What has happened to the churches where it's all take? I'm trying to teach this principle. And those of you that live in Pakistan or India or that part of the world, even Afghanistan, even the very poorest of poor people, don't just take. Learn to whatever you have. Remember the widow's might? She didn't have a lot. She gave two farthings, or which would be less than even two pennies. She gave that, and Jesus said she's given more than the rest, who had put in gold and, and whatever uh, money they had, uh, Caesar's coin, they put that in there, and Jesus said that the widow gave more. Now, how can that be? It's not a numbers thing. It's a heart thing. I'm asking you, where is your heart? I always know when a man or a woman really have given their life to Jesus, and that's when they begin to give of their tithes and offering. We've seen some real miracles uh, just in the last uh, few months of people that have known about Jesus and God for a long time, but now they understand that if they don't eat the seed, but they plant the seed, and then there's time and there's watering, then comes the harvest and the blessings from the Lord. Let me give you an example. I'm teaching the very same things this last weekend from God's Word as I taught back in 1980 at King's Chapel with six in the youth group. I'm teaching the very same thing that I taught at Val Vista Assembly of God in 1985 when there was just 50 people in the congregation. I'm teaching the very same Word of God that I taught when the congregation was only uh, 200 people. But as we are faithful to the task of teaching, more people got saved and more ministry was uh, has been spawning and thousands have come to know the Lord. And again, many have gone on to be with the Lord, and many others will follow. And people that were raised up in that ministry have gone on to do missions work, gone on to be pastors, gone on to do work for the Lord, that only God can calculate the number. 
So I'm just encouraging you right now. What is 10%? Well, the poorest of poor, if they have a dime, should give one penny to the Lord. If you have $100, before you spend any of the 90, give 10%, $10 to the Lord. If you make $10,000 a month, and that's your income, and many do that, then $1,000 of that goes to the church. The church is the house, the storehouse, by where we build, receive, promote, encourage, do missions, and fulfill the great commission that Jesus tasked us to do. So if you're really in love with Jesus, be in love with his church, as imperfect as the church might be. I'm an imperfect man. And if I've ever offended you, maybe not so much what I did, but maybe what I didn't do, either way, what I did or didn't do, please forgive me. I ask you humbly to forgive me. And don't let anything that I have done keep you from being who God wants you to be. Man, bad things happen to us. Sometimes, you know, we go to the hospital and a baby has died. Or sometimes a woman goes and she has her organs removed and she can't bring forth a child. Well, God can still turn that around and bless other children through your life. God has a plan, and many of you have fostered, many of you have adopted, many of us have taken on families. We're ministering to them even now, not just for a little while, but we're ministering to them till they make heaven. And that's what happens with the seed. The seed is planted, it's watered through prayer, the sunshine causes photosynthesis to occur, then comes the plant, then comes the maturation, and then we bring forth the fruit or the corn or the wheat or whatever it is that's come out of that. Now liken that to your own personal life. We invite Jesus into our heart, he then comes and helps us, and then we follow this order of Jesus who's greater than Melchizedek. And Melchizedek set the pattern. And that's how goodness and godliness came through, what, the different tribes of Israel that eventually became nations. And then we pattern our nation after God or the nations of the world. I'm praying that all the nations of the world and those who want to survive will pattern themselves after the teachings of Jesus, the Judeo-Christian values of Scripture. Now, America had drifted, but now the Supreme Court is making better decisions. Why? Because we have better leaders on the Supreme Court. California had drifted way far, but now in September, we're going to get another governor that's going to bring back truth. Uh, we've seen that with, with bad pastors in churches. And then we see God coming along and he brings in a new pastor and there's a, a new a revival that takes place. I believe that right now the church isn't failing. The Christ, Christianity is not failing. It's actually growing because God is proving who he is. And if you'll follow God, if you'll follow his word, he'll help you. So can I encourage you to look at your life and begin to plant seed and water it with prayer and stay with the Lord and let him bless you. Bless the body. You can contribute to this ministry and God will use those resources to help us reach the world. We saw more than 11,000 people give their hearts to Jesus Christ last Friday. And now we are raising up pastors and these hundreds of pastors are going forth and teaching others to follow. Would you pray with me? Pray this out loud and say, Lord Jesus, I commit to your teachings and I follow your ways. You are greater than Melchizedek. You're greater than Moses. You're greater than the angels. You are my Lord and Savior. And I choose you now. Guide us and help us. Lead us by your presence. And I commit my heart and life to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Hey, thanks for watching The Bridge. I hope you're blessed. We're blessed and we want you to be blessed too and encouraged. Go in the joy of the Lord and we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us today on The Bridge. Please check out our website at www.thebridgeministry.online. Also, like us on your favorite social media platform. And if you're on YouTube, be sure and like and subscribe. Thank you and have a great week.